Welcome back to Fix This Build That. I'm Brad, and today we're going to be building a simple outfeed and assembly table. So this is the current outfeed table and it has been great. I built this thing over a decade ago, but the top is now dished out. I want this to be able to pull double duty as an assembly table as well. I think I might even want to put some T-Track in the top, but I'll get it assembled first and then we'll see where it goes from there. Now this design is nothing new and many other makers have similar styled outfeed tables because it's just a great basic design. Now I'll have free plans to my version with a link down below in the description. This is a great build for leftover offcuts too, since most of the pieces are fairly narrow and under 30 inches long. But you can also make it from one full sheet of plywood if you don't have a lot of offcuts. I started by cutting the parts for a top and bottom frame. And each frame has two long sides and four short supports that connect them to hold the top and the lower shelf. I used the stop block on my miter saw stand to make short work of the repetitive cuts and get the exact same size pieces. Now like most of my shop furniture, I'm using pocket holes for joinery. I drilled two on each end of the short supports. An assembly of the lower frame is straightforward since the inner supports are all the same length. Now having the pocket screws angling outward on the ends isn't the most ideal situation as you typically want to go away from the ends and not towards them. But the frames are going to be glued and screwed in place which are going to provide all the support. I evenly spaced the inner supports and then I secured them in place to finish off the frame. Now the upper frame is the exact same as the lower one, except I put a few vertical pocket holes along all the pieces as well. And these are going to be used to attach the top to the base, while the shelf will be held in place down below with the legs and a few screws from above. Now a quick tip here, when you're drilling the holes on the ends of the inner supports, it's better to have them spaced a little closer together using the A and B holes on your Craig jig versus the A and C holes. This is going to give your drill a little more space off the bench when you're securing the lower screws during assembly. Also, make sure you have the vertical pocket holes facing all the same direction so that you don't have a surprise later on. And next I move to the legs. I grabbed some more plywood offcuts from the stack and I set up for that first cut. I ran four pieces at three and a half inches wide, then I moved the fence in to two and three quarters of an inch for the next four pieces. Now the legs will be made by joining one of each of these sizes together. I cut all the boards to the same length of my miter saw and then I moved over to the joinery. Now the two and three quarter inch parts are going to be butted up on top of the wire ones and connected with pocket screws and glue to form a strong L shaped leg that's three and a half inches on each side. I drilled the holes and I spaced them out evenly across the board because these will be visible when you look underneath the table. Now to secure the pieces together, I used wood glue and screws and clamped the boards down on the end of the bench. And just make sure that the ends are flush so there won't be any mismatch with that top. For the next assembly steps, I brought over a couple larger pieces of MDF to increase the size of my workbench top. And this is exactly why I need to build a new assembly table that's going to be wider and let me assemble larger things. Now, I love having mobile workstations, so the outfit table is going to get casters just like the old one. And to give the wheels a mounting spot, I cut some 3.5 inch square blocks out of the leftover plywood. Now, before attaching the wheel blocks, you can pair up the legs to get them exactly how you want them to look if you're a stickler for details like me. And if you don't care, then just keep your mismatched legs to yourself. Now, I used glue and two brad nails to temporarily secure each block, then I came back with a countersink bit and secured them with one and a quarter inch screws. I repeated this on all the other legs to finish them off. And make sure you do pre-drill that leg in because if you don't, you're likely going to split the plywood since you're going into the edge like this. With all my base parts ready, I brought over the top frame first. I laid it upside down to reference the flat surface of the workbench. Now each leg gets joined to the frame with glue and two screws per side. I didn't need to clamp anything in place here since the screws pull the legs in tight to the corner. And here you want to make sure that both the leg and the frame are flush to the table. Any dust or debris that gets under either of those would raise it up and translate through to an uneven surface mounting to the top. And next I flip the table base upright and I put the lower frame into place. It should slide right in and rest on the caster blocks at the bottom of the legs. I didn't add any glue to these joints since it would have made a mess sliding in there and the blocks are glued and screwed in place which will give it some good support. I'm making the top for the table from extra MDF I had on hand, which wasn't the best idea, but more on that later. I ripped the MDF to width and then I cut it to length with my Craig track saw. And since MDF isn't really durable and it doesn't make for a good edge, I decided to trim it with some hardwood 
from some more offcuts. I picked out a thick piece of poplar, which technically is a hardwood, and I thought I would mill that down to one and a half inch wide by three quarter inch wide trim stock. And thanks to the sponsors of today's video, Jet and Woodcraft, they're gonna make that possible. I added the new Jet bandsaw and planer to my shop this year, and they have put in a yeoman's work. They pair together to resaw and flatten rough stock, and the 13 inch resaw of that bandsaw matches up perfectly with the 13 inch planer. The segmented cutter head on the planer also gives a great finish right off the tool. Now, if you want to find out more about these machines, you can head over to your local Woodcraft store and see them on display for yourself. They have over 70 stores across the US, but if you don't have a Woodcraft near you, you can check the links below in the description to the Woodcraft website. They have a huge line of the Jet products along with all the other woodworking tools and supplies that you're going to need for your projects. And a big thanks to Jet and Woodcraft, they've been great sponsors of my channel this year and I'm looking forward to working with them in the future. Now that I was done using my table saw, I could remove the top from the old outfeed table and use it for the lower shelf. I cut it to length of my track saw and then I cut it to width on the table saw to fit the opening. And even though the top was really beat up after a decade of use, I just flipped it over and that underside was clean as a whistle. I slid the lower shelf into place on the frame and I secured it to the cross supports with a few screws. And then I went back to salvage some more parts from the old table. All right, I've gotten the top off and I'm actually going to salvage the wheels off of the old outfeed table. But before I do, I just wanted to show you real quick. I have people ask a lot, hey, is it okay to build with less than three quarter inch material? These legs are half inch plywood. I had this table for about 10 years and the legs have held up great. It was this top that was just, you can see the flex on it as I hang here. So it just, the top wasn't enough, but half inch for the legs, is perfectly fine and if you want to build with half inch it can take a lot of weight but it's better for the vertical members i wouldn't do half inch for these members here i would make these sturdy worst case scenario you just remake it with something stronger i flipped the old one over and i removed those three inch casters and i disassembled the rest of the table Come on. then i moved the new table to the floor and installed the casters on the bottom of the legs now before flipping the table back over, I put down the MDF top to the floor so that I could attach it. It's going to be much easier to secure the top this way than crawling under the table later. And I just really hate that I even have to think about this because in my 30s I wouldn't have given it a second thought. But I'm over 40 now and where did I put my fish oil pills? Oh well. Well with the top on I brought over the poplar trim. I started the short sides and I set one end flush and made a mark about an inch long on the other end. I cut the piece to size on the miter saw and then I brought it back over to the table. I'm just using glue and brad nails to attach the trim. If it was regular plywood, I probably would have just used pocket screws on the underside and attached the trim before installing the top. But MDF doesn't hold screws very well, so I defaulted to a glue only connection held in place to dry with those brad nails. After securing the short parts flush on one side, I installed the long trim on that same side. And when you're attaching the trim, air on the slightly proud side so you can sand it flush down to the top at the end. After that, I used my pull saw to cut the overhang off of the short trim pieces. Putting a little pressure on the center of the blade with my finger while I was cutting helps me keep that blade flush to the side and give me a nice cut. After cutting off the ends, I put in the final piece of trim and glued and nailed it into place. Then I finished everything off by flush trimming those long trim pieces as well. After that, I filled the nail holes with wood putty and then I sanded the trim flush to the top. I also sanded all around the edges and just smoothed everything out to prep for finish. All right, now there's one more thing that I wanna to add to this outfeed table and it's gonna be really a test for a future assembly table. This is my current assembly table and I really like it. It's just a bit too small and I don't love the dog bench holes on it, but I love having it mobile. So I'm gonna put some T-Track in the outfeed table. I'm gonna put three little strips in, one at each end and one in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and go outside to do that because routing in the shop just makes a huge mess. And then I'll install the T-Track and we'll see how it looks. The T-Track is three quarters of an inch wide, so I chucked up a three quarter inch bit in my router. I set it to just over three eighths of an inch deep, which will put that track right below the surface. I positioned the dados for the track four inches from each end and then one centered on the table. A straight edge clamp paired up with this router makes the cut really easy. And to avoid tear out going into and out of the cut, I glued some sacrificial blocks onto the trim using painter's tape and CA glue. Now adding these little sacrificial blocks was a tip I picked up from my buddy Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop. He did an almost identical outfeed table, but he used dog holes on his top instead of T-Track. 
I'll link below to his video as well if you want to try that option. Now after cutting the first two slots, I was kicking myself for using this MDF. The MDF is fine and good for a flat top, but it is an absolute disaster to route. I would highly recommend using solid plywood if you have it, I just didn't have any large enough pieces on hand. I mean it worked, but the mounds of dust this thing left on my garage door as well as everywhere else just were a complete mess. And needless to say. Now another issue with the MDF is the poor screw holding ability like I mentioned earlier. And since I've routed this down, 3 eighths of an inch of MDF to screw into just wouldn't effectively hold the track down under pressure. So I cut some strips of plywood to go directly under the T-track, and this will give the screws something to bite into. I glued these strips into place and I weighted them down to dry since I couldn't use any fasteners or they'd poke through those track slots. I also decided to go ahead and fill in the gap between the trim and the apron all around the top. I used some small strips of MDF and glued and nailed them into place. This is just going to give me some additional clamping options on the overhang so everything is flush and I don't have to worry about a mismatch between the trim and the top. And she ain't pretty, but hey, it's a scrap project, right? I flip the table back over and I test fit the T-Track into the slots. And the track is longer than the table, so I put it in place and I marked it to size. And I did leave the track a little bit short from the ends to avoid cutting too close to the screw holes on the offcut. The track is aluminum and it can be easily cut with a carbide tooth blade on a standard miter saw. Just go slow and let the teeth do the work in small nibbles versus trying to slam through it. Now to secure the track, I used 3 quarters inch number 6 screws, just because the 1 inch screws were out of stock at the home center. I pre-drilled and secured one screw on the end of the track, and then that let me pre-drill the rest of the holes without it moving. Then I just went back in and drove the screws through the rest of the track. I do have a self-centering VIX bit that I pre-drill these holes with. It makes this process a lot faster, and it makes sure those screws aren't misplaced, so then they don't want to stand proud at the bottom of the track. And to give the top some protection, I also added a coat of marine grade water-based polyurethane. I applied everything with a foam brush, and as I was putting it on, some of it did get onto the T-Track. I just came back and wiped it off with a cloth before moving on. I rolled the table into place, and it is ready for action. The top of the outfeed table is just lower than the miter bars on my table saw sled, so when I'm using that, I don't have any interference. This was a great off-cut project, and is a great upgrade for any shop. Hey, before you go, if you want to check out some more shop projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right there. I think you're going to like them. If you want the free plans for this one, they're right down below in the description. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.